I used to stay with my grandparents in Mitchell's Plain during the week. And on weekends I would come home and my uncle would normally bring me. He was about 16, 17 at the time. And we walked across the field. I think there were a couple of gangsters on the right hand side asking him to come over to say to come have a chat. He left me on the one side, he went across uh, and they uh, robbed him of his watch and his wallet. That's something that still stuck with me till today. I, think I can still remember exactly what happened and that gave me a strong sense of uh, being vigilant at a very early age. The community played such an important part of growing up and it goes a long way in helping us do what we do now. From a cyber security perspective, because you need to be vigilant, because you need to look for those anomalies, of, uh, so to speak. The kids that come from those kind of backgrounds are more in tune to be more successful in that field, in my opinion. By the end of next year, it will be 3.5 million vacant roles in cybersecurity globally. I used to be a very shy kid. I think I still am. With my school years, I actually wanted to always be on top, that I know for sure. My high school, I went to Oakdale Secondary. People would always complain about what a bad school it is, there's a lot of violence taking place. But then I always say that it's not the school that actually define you, you are the person that define yourself. So from like grade eight up until 10, I was kind of bullied. It was emotional bullying. And then I made new friends, and the friends that I made were basically cool people. Um, I was expected to smoke and drink, you know. I did do it, I did, I'm, I'm not gonna lie about that. I came back from school, I was high, and I was talking to my great grandmother. She wanted to talk about how of a bright future I have, and I, I shouldn't mess it up. That's when I was like, Mom, it's not worth it. I do not want to put her through stupid things because of drugs and all that stuff. Even if you got up in that situation, you have to decide what you're going to do about it. So I just decided that I don't want to be that person, so I would take on any opportunity that would come my way. We've started the APSA Cybersecurity Academy in partnership with the Maharishi Institute. Uh, it's currently set up in Johannesburg. We are taking uh, marginalized kids, or kids that are coming out of dire circumstances, and actually giving them a very sought after skill, which is cybersecurity. And more importantly, whether it is with APSA or the multitude of companies that needs the skill, is it giving them a job? They go through three courses. They go through their A+, which is your basic computer training, go to your N+, which is the network component, and then you do the Cisco CCNA uh, Security Ops uh, training, which then gives you that security analyst designation. So far what I've learned here has, has played a huge impact on, on my life. I even opened my own laptop fixing business. Yeah, I have like three customers, or I've had three customers so far. I'm more confident in class. I can speak freely in front of people. Not 100%, but I'm still trying on doing better. You see the most unbelievable academic results and work-based results, which I, th I think are quite unprecedented, but it's because of this integrated human program. Giving up, it's not an option. I've realized that you have to actually push yourself. Just try a bit harder and see where you, what you are actually capable of. My grandmother would definitely be proud of me and if she'd tell me that she's proud of me right now, I'd tell her that this is only the beginning. If I believe that the work that I am doing for the academy, there's meaning in it, it brings me happiness that nothing else would fulfill. It's about changing lives.